Properly cover the pipes to prevent them from getting damaged by spark, flame, or hot cutting scraps. 3. Pipes without pressure can bear max 130 degrees centigrade temperature for one hour. 5. Inspection on level and the density of battery electrolyte. Inspect the level of electrolyte. Please inspect the level of electrolyte frequently, and the level shall be 10 to 15 minutes above the pole plate. Inspect the density of electrolyte and the unit voltage of battery. When winter is coming, please inspect the density of electrolyte and the unit voltage of battery. The density of electrolyte shall be 1.26 to 1.29 gram per cubic centimeters. If above 1.30, it means incorrect electrolytes has been filled and the density of electrolytes must be adjusted. If the density is 1.20 to 1.26, it means that battery has not been fully charged and must be charged. If the density is lower than 1.20, it means that there is a serious electric loss or failure. Charge the battery and inspect it. 6. Inspection on transmission oil level and filling of transmission oil. Inspect the level of transmission oil when carrying out class 1 maintenance for the vehicle. Inspect the level of transmission oil. Unscrew the side oil level inspection plug and inspect the oil level. The oil level shall reach the lower edge of the threaded hole. In addition, Inspect and clean up the air ventilating device of transmission and replace this device if any damage is found. Fill the transmission oil during each class 2 or higher class maintenance. Replace the transmission oil with 85W-90 GL5 gear oil for heavy duty vehicle. The transmission oil shall be replaced at least once a year. Unscrew the oil filling plug on the upper cover of transmission and add a specified amount of gear oil. 7. Inspection on axial housing oil level and filling of axial housing oil. The designation and the replacement interval of axial housing gear oil are the same as those of transmission. Inspect the level of axial housing oil. Remove screw plug on the rear cover of axial housing. The oil level shall reach the lower edge of the threaded hole. Filled axial housing oil. Remove the oil filling plug above the internal axle differential for intermediate axle. Add a specified amount of gear oil. As for rear axle, the oil shall be filled through the threaded inspection hole on rear cover of axle housing. 8. Inspection on hub reductor oil level and filling of hub reductor oil. The designation and the replacement interval of hub reductor oil are the same as those of axle housing. Rotate the wheel to locate the oil drain plug at the lower position. Remove the oil filling plug and fill the oil into the hub reductor. Thereafter, rotate the wheel again until the oil filler is at the lowest position. Let excessive oil flow out. Tighten up the plug. Note that oil shall be replaced when the engine is hot. Oil filling method for single stage axle. Unscrew the oil filling plug for hub reductor. The oil filler at the highest position. Slowly fill specified amount of gear oil. Rotate the wheel till oil filler is 30 degrees below the horizontal position. Let excessive oil drain out. Tighten up the plug. 9. Inspection on balance shaft oil level and filling of balance shaft oil. Remove the air vent plug and oil filling plug. And fill the lubricative oil through the oil filler. Please fill the oil slowly until the oil overflows from the oil filler. Tighten up the air vent plug and oil filling plug. Ten. Inspection on oil level in cap lifting cylinder and discharging of air in system. For class 2 or higher class maintenance, be sure to inspect the oil level in cap tilting oil pump. Unscrewed oil plug, fill the specified hydraulic oil into the lower edge of oil filler. If there's air in the system, discharge the air. The method is as follows. 1. Tilt the cap slowly with the hand pump. 
Meanwhile, fill the oil. Two, lower the cap to let excessive oil overflow. Three, tilt and lower the cap once again with a hand pump. Inspect the oil level and add oil. Finally, tighten up the oil filling plug. Eleven, inspection on lubricating nipple. Please inspect each lubricating nipple frequently. Pay special attention to the lubrication of the falling parts. Left to right bearings of clutch release shaft, clutch pedal shaft, driving universal joint, spline shaft of propeller shaft, lower bracket of shock absorber, shifting lever support, braking clearance adjusting arm, water pumping bearing. Grease nipple on fan supporter, leaf spring pan, front end of steering knuckle campaign, lubricating method for steering knuckle campaign. Check up the front axle. Feel the lubricating grease until it is extruded out from the lower surface of plane bearing. Inspect the clearance of side buffer plate of balance suspension and. If the clearance exceeded three millimeters, please mount the adjusting gasket or replace the side buffer plate. Twelve, replacement of wheel inspection. One, don't damage the thread on any wheel bolt. Two, no paint, lubricative grease, or any other dirty on the fitting surfaces of brake drum and rear. Three. The compressing surface of wheel nuts shall be clean and free from dirt or oil stain. Assembly one: wipe clean and apply some grease to wheel locating holes and external circle of hub. Two: apply some grease or engine oil to the thread of wheel bolts and wheel nuts. Three: all wheel nuts are with right hand thread. Install the wheel. Tighten up wheel bolts in crossing order with the wheel lifted up from the ground. Lower the wheel onto the ground and tighten each bolt with the torque of 550 to 600 newton meter. Four. Whatever a wheel is reinstalled, retighten up the bolts after the vehicle has run for 50 kilometers. Thirteen. Half axle drawing operation. As for the drive axle with differential lock. While maintaining or towing, draw out the half axle in accordance with the specifications if necessary. Otherwise, after half axle is drawn out, the sliding engagement sleeve of differential lock may drop into the axle housing, so the half axle can't be reinstalled. The trouble will occur once the vehicle is driven. The correct operation procedure is as follows: one, press the interwheel differential lock rocker switch. Two. Observe whether the differential lock indicator lamp comes on. If not, get a gear engaged and slightly release the clutch to move the vehicle. Then this lamp shall come on. Three. Observe whether the working cylinder of differential lock is pushed out effectively and the differential lock is completely locked up. Four. Interwheel differential lock of intermediate axle. Is on the right side of axle housing, and the interwheel differential lock of rear axle on the left. Five. Lock up the air cylinder rocker arm of differential lock and the braking clearance adjusting arm by iron wire to prevent the differential lock from getting released automatically when there is no air pressure or power supply. Six. Now the half axle may be drawn out for maintenance and repair. Two inspection and adjustment of vehicle. One inspection and adjustment of valve clearance. Adjust the WP12 intake exhaust valve clearance and the WEVB clearance. Which WP12 engine is a full valve structure? The cold state clearance of intake valve is 0.4 millimeters, and the cold state clearance of exhaust valve is 0.6 millimeters. The cold state clearance of WEVB is 0.4 millimeters. One. Open the upper cover of valve chamber. Two. Turn the flywheel in the normal rotating direction of engine until the scale groove on flywheel is aligned with the timing mark on flywheel case. Now the cylinder one is at the top dead center 
of its compression stroke and the intake exhaust valves of cylinder 1 are closed. 3. Adjust the intake and exhaust valve clearance of cylinder 1, the exhaust valve clearance of cylinder 5 and cylinder 3, and intake valve clearance of cylinder 2 and cylinder 4. 4. Unscrew the intake valve rocker arm adjusting bolt. Insert a 0.4 mm filler gauge between the adjusting bolt and the valve bridge. Turn the adjusting bolt until the filler gauge can be moved with certain resistance felt and then tighten up the adjusting bolt locking nut. In this way, adjust the intake valve clearance of cylinder 1, 2, cylinder 2, and cylinder 4 in order. 5. Unscrew the WEVB adjusting bolt locking nut. Turn the WEVB adjusting bolt until the small pistol of the valve axle is pressed down to the bottom and there's no clearance between small pistol and exhaust valve bridge. Unscrew the exhaust valve adjusting bolt. Insert a 0.6 mm filler gauge between the valve bridge and exhausted valve adjusting bolt. Turn the adjusting bolt until the filler gauge can be moved with certain resistance felt. Tighten up the exhaust valve adjusting bolt locking nut. The adjustment of exhaust valve clearance is completed. 6. Unscrew the WEVB adjusting bolt locking nut. Insert a 0.4 mm filler gauge between the adjusting bolt and the valve bridge. Turn the WEVB adjusting bolt until the filler gauge can be moved with certain resistance felt. Tighten up the locking nut and then the adjustment of WEVB clearance adjust is completed. In this way, adjust the exhaust valve clearance and WEVB clearance of cylinder 1, cylinder 3, and cylinder 5 in order. 7. Rotate the engine for another round. Set the cylinder 6 at the top dead center of compression stroke and then adjust the intake exhaust valves of cylinder 6 and intake valves of cylinder 5 and cylinder 3 and the exhaust valves of cylinder 2 and cylinder 4. 8. After the adjustment and inspection, mount and tighten up the valve chamber cover of each cylinder. 2. Adjustment of tension of engine belt. Inspecting and adjusting the tension of WP10 engine belt is the same as that for WD615 engine. WP12 engine belt is self-tensing type, so if belt loses, the tension will be adjusted automatically. Users shall only replace the belt when there are longitudinal or transverse cracks. 3. Adjustment of idle speed. Which high engine? 1. Turn on the ignition switch and start the engine. 2. Push down the brake pedal. Press the cruising resume key and hold it for 1 to 2 seconds to activate idle speed adjustment. The engine speed will be 600 rotations per minute. 3. Adjust the idle speed of engine through the cruising plus and minus switches and the adjustment scope is 600 rotations per minute to 1000 rotations per minute. 4. Press the cruising resume key and hold it for 1 to 2 seconds to confirm the current idle speed, then release the brake pedal. The adjustment of idle speed is completed. Comis engine, the adjustment scope for idle speed is 600 rotations per minute to 800 rotations per minute. The operation method, make the engine run at idle speed and then press the idle speed cruising speed adjust the rocker switch upwards or downwards one time to increase or reduce the idle speed by 25 rotations per minute. Four. Inspection and adjustment of free stroke of clutch. Measure the free stroke of clutch pedal. Standard valve is 35 to 40 mm. If it does not comply with the standard value, adjust it through the adjusting bolt on clutch pedal shaft. Unscrew the locking nut and screw in or out the adjusting bolt to increase or reduce the free stroke. After adjusting to the standard valve, tighten up the locking nut. 5. Air discharging for clutch hydraulic system. Fill the clutch brake fluid. Open clutch oil tank cover. Fill specific brake fluid with specifications of standard DOT 3 and DOT 4. It is recommended to use like 901, DOT 3 brake fluid. 
make fluid level lie between upper and lower lines. Air discharging method for clutch system. When the level of brake fluid in oil cup is lower than the standard line, push down the clutch pedal for several times and then push it down to the end. Screw the air bleeding screw on the booster cylinder. After the air is charged, tighten up the pedal and push down the pedal again. Repeat the operation for several times until heavy resistance is felt when pushing. 6. Adjustment of pressure regulating valve Pressure regulating valve is a device limiting the maximum air pressure in braking system. And the maximum air pressure can be regulated through the adjusting screw of pressure regulating valve. The maximum air pressure is 8.1 bar. And for Shekman F3000 vehicle, 10 bar. Adjustment method and screw in or out the adjusting screw to increase or reduce the maximum air pressure. Then tighten up the locking nut. 7. Adjustment of free stroke of brake pedal. Measure the free stroke of brake pedal. The standard value is 17 to 21 mm. If it does not comply with the standard value, adjust it through the adjusting bolt on brake pedal shaft and screw in or out the adjustment bolt to increase or reduce the free stroke. After the free stroke has been adjusted to the standard value, tighten up the locking nut. 8. Inspection of thickness of friction lining. Remove the plug from the inspection hole on braking backing plate and inspect the thickness of the portion with most serious wear. It may not be less than 6 mm, otherwise the friction lining shall be replaced. 9. Adjustment of brake clearance adjusting arm When the stroke of brake cylinder pistol rod exceeds 30 mm, adjust the brake clearance. Adjustment method of screw the hand brake, jack up the wheels. Turn a hexagonal bolt on the screw end of brake clearance adjusting arm until the wheel is locked up, and then turn the bolt reversely until three sounds are heard. After the adjustment, inspect the whether the vehicle pulls to one side in braking operation. 10. Adjustment of toe-in Inspection method 1. Check up the front axle of vehicle 2. Leave a measurement mark on the height of tire radius and the center line of the two front wheels. 3. Measure the wheel thread and record the value A. 4. Rotate the two wheels backwards for 180 degree. Measure the wheel thread and record the value B. 5. The difference between B and A is the value of toe-in. For diagonal tire, the value shall be 2 to 4 mm. For radial tire, 0 to 1 mm. If the standard is not satisfied, please adjust the toe-in. Adjustment method Unscrew the tie rod in locking bolts. Rotate the tie rod to adjust its length. Measure the toe-in again. After the standard is satisfied, tighten up the locking bolts on both ends. Section 5 Possible Troubles and Troubleshooting 1. Engine can be started up normally. Inspect the fuel pipeline. 1. Inspect the level and quality of fuel. 2. Inspect whether there's air in low-pressure fuel pipeline. 3. Inspect whether there's air in high-pressure fuel pipeline. Inspect the electrical circuit. Turn on the ignition switch and observe whether the EDC trouble lamp is carrying out self-inspection. 1. If self-inspection is normal, further inspection whether the 8 feet of key switch are alive during startup. For WP10 engine, inspect the K701 starting relay and the terminal 50 of starter, whether the 6-pin connector is connected properly. For WP12 engine, only inspect the 6-pin connector. 2. If the EDC lamp does not inspect, inspect the K171 load relay and the electric equipment board fuse F400 of electric equipment board. Whether the front X337 big plug of a radiator grill is connected properly, the polarity and two fuse boxes of battery, and whether the 89 pin connector of ECU is loosened. 2. Engine speed is limited to 1000 rotations per minute or 1500 rotations per minute. If the engine speed is limited to 1000 rotations per minute, 
Inspect whether the throttle pedal is in poor contact, whether there's water in connector of throttle pedal, and whether the newly installed throttle pedal is of the same model as the original pedal. If the engine speed is limited to 1,500 rotations per minute, the engine will go into limping back home mode. In such case, inspect the wiring of fuel injector, the engine coolant temperature sensor, engine oil temperature sensor, intake temperature sensor, and intake pressure sensor, the crankshaft position sensor, camshaft position sensor, the flow rate measuring unit and the real pressure sensor. 3. Clutch can't be fully disengaged. Inspect whether three strokes of clutch meets the standard requirements. Inspect whether there is sufficient brake fluid in oil can of clutch and whether the brake fluid is deteriorated or leaks. Inspect whether there is air in the hydraulic oil pipeline. Inspect whether the air pressure in the vehicle reaches the level required. Inspect whether the master cylinder and the wheel cylinder are damaged. 4. No high or low speed gear zone exists. Inspect whether the air pressure meets the requirement. Inspect whether outlet pressure pressure reducing or filtering valve complies with the requirements. Inspect whether there is a clear air discharging sound arising from double H valve when the shifting between high and low gears and whether the double H valve is damaged. Inspect whether the high or low speed gear cylinder of auxiliary transmission is damaged. Inspect whether the auxiliary transmission centralizer is damaged. The high and the low gear can be shifted only when the transmission is set at neutral position. One cannot shift when any gear is engaged. 5. No exhaust brake can be applied. The driver shall inspect and eliminate the trouble. 1. 800 rotations per minute. Inspect whether the engine speed is higher than 800 rotations per minute when the exhaust brake is applied. 2. Inspect whether the engine reports the trouble code 311 for exhaust brake saw note valve. Inspect the control line of exhaust brake saw note valve. 3. Inspect the wiring of exhaust brake switch. 4. Inspect the air pressure of vehicle. If the air pressure is too low, the butterfly valve will not work. 5. Inspect whether butterfly valve of exhaust brake is jammed.